Good morning. On today's what, whip and coffee, and yeah, I have coffee. Let me get a sip. I am working on continuing to work on this blanket. Um, I put it away because I needed to work on something else and uh, get that ready for prayer shawl. So I finally did get that taken care of, and now I'm moving back on to the blanket. Um, I do want to get this done. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of disillusioned with what's going on in our world today. I think this morning I woke up to reading about some guy shooting up a bunch of people in uh, Illinois. Um, luckily, there was a fellow, a good guy, who happened to have concealed carry, and he took the guy out after he'd shot multiple people. So, you know, there's one for the uh, good guys out there. And most likely this poor guy that did... Um, did manage to take out this guy or probably be charged with something and that's kind of sad because he actually probably saved a lot of lives by um, killing the shooter but you know it's America they have some strange rules and rules here um, one of the things I was reading too is um, this is the first time in since the uh, U.S. made the deal with um, Saudi Arabia about using um, U.S. dollars. They have um, not re-signed that agreement, so they will not be using uh, what they call petrodollars. They'll be selling um, a lot of their oil in uh, other currencies. And... Um, that's not a good thing for the U.S. because that means prices will go skyrocketing. Not that they already aren't because OPEC, when you let them control things, um, prices go higher. That's why you're seeing higher gas prices. The lower gas prices we had were because we were using our own oil supply, which, of course, Biden cut off unfortunately. So um, we're going to see some hard times here coming up pretty soon. And then you have all these different states that are doing what they call curtailing groundwater, um, which I don't know if you know, the Idaho farmers are really raising the ruckus because what it means is they won't be able to water their crops that they have planted. Um, so all that food is going to basically go to waste. Um, and if you like go to Idaho potatoes, well, you're going to probably pay a whole lot more next year if there are any that survive. Yeah. Our government is doing this under the guise of trying to keep us safe. Um, they are using the PCR test to test for avian flu in uh, chicken, turkeys, those kind of things. Problem with that is the PCR test is not accurate, so they're going to be killing off millions of chickens, so, you know, chicken eggs, all those things are going to be higher priced as well. Um, but the biggest thing is you have a lot of these states that are doing this curtailing of water for the farmers so that they cannot water their crops. They are trying to control the food source. And this is something new. So that kind of worries me when I see those kind of things happen. 
it all goes under the radar and that's kind of scary you know and then I think um, someone had pointed out now I find this I don't know if it's true or not maybe Biden's medication had kicked in who knows um, but they pointed out that they think that there was a a robot in place of Biden at an interview because all of a sudden he was absolutely coherent and you could understand what he was saying and I don't know if you guys have been watching him lately but um, any speeches he gives his speech is so slurred um, nonsensical words you know a lot of things that I see with someone who has dementia um, but then in this interview He's clear, he's articulate, has no issues, so, you know, kind of curious about that. Um, I'm not going to say that he is a robot, but it does make one wonder how uh, different things can be from moment to moment with this fella. And of course, you know, China is now putting out, um, they're doing mass production of robots. Um, and if you've seen any of those videos, they're very human-like in their actions and everything else. So, kind of leads a little credence to those conspiracy theories at times, doesn't it? And you got to remember, with conspiracy theory, the reason that they always go so far is because there's always a bit of truth to them. Um, but you got to discern what the bit of truth is. So yeah, it's been a little interesting couple of days seeing some of the things that are going on. I do hope that the farmers do prevail in their you know, their requests, their actions against the different states with their water curtailing. Because, quite honestly, we're in serious trouble if our farmers go down. You know, if we lose that ability for them to bring food to the table, yeah. Then we're at the mercy of a lot of other countries and um, you know that's a little bit alarming it is for me anyway may not be for you folks but it is for me it just makes me a little bit concerned about what's going to happen and a lot of people say oh well it's no big deal yeah, it is a big deal. If farmers cannot um, do what they need to do with the crops, as in um, being able to All right, where's my There we are. Um, if they're not able to water the crops, their crops are not going to grow. Um, part of the reason they have these irrigation systems is so that there is enough water to make sure that the plants and things um, do grow. So that they're uh, they can feed people out there, and some of the some of the states are upset because farmers are now going to farmers market, selling directly to us instead of going through the normal food chain, and of course that um, that all that concerns them, and you know I can understand how they might be concerned about that because that you know that takes away their um, supposedly tax dollars doesn't really when you think about it but 
you know, that's their concern, is they're going to lose out on those tax dollars. And of course, everybody knows there is no such thing as government money. It's all taxes that we pay. So, I don't know. Seems like the world's getting a little crazier and crazier every day. <coughs> kind of curious what you guys are working on today. Um, I, like I said, I'm trying to get this blanket moved a little bit further to get it finished. And i um, like to be able to get it finished before it comes time to do the move. And now I don't have anything set in place yet. But i um, working on those kind of issues. Looking for another place as well as packing up this one. And that's always fun. Of course, the cats think it's great fun, and they're jumping in and out of the boxes. You know, and I'm concerned about, oh, I'll make sure there's not a cat in the box when I tape it up. <laughs> so, um, did get a lot more of the yarn put away, you know, packed up, ready to go. And then I um, went in. I have a bunch of knitting needles and, you know, knitting tools, those kind of things. So I sat down and a lot of times I have this system. It's a, it's like a fisherman's bag for them to carry their different lures and those kind of things, hooks and things. And it's, um, it kind of zips up and it's got these little pockets in it for them to slip those things into. I've always kept my needles in there, my circular needles in there, but there came a time where um, I was just tossing them in a bag. So yesterday it took me about two hours, two and a half hours to sort through those, put them back where they were supposed to go so that I could get those needles packed up. And that's not including the needles that are actually in projects. Um, I just packed those projects up into a tote all themselves. But um, I've got a ton of knitting needles that I didn't realize I had. And then, of course, you know, it, it always seems whenever I needed double-pointed needles for something with my knitting needles, I never could find them. So, of course, you know, I'd just run off and buy another set of double-pointed needles. I think I've got about uh, seven sets of um, number fives and seven sets of number six and seven, seven and, you know, five of fours. And I was like, well, I guess if I do a better system where I keep track of it, put them back where they're supposed to go, um, I won't have so many other sets. <laughs> But um, it was rather interesting to see all those things, you know, as I was putting them away, putting them back into their sleeves and everything. And I was like, why do I do that? Why am I so lazy when it comes to that, that, putting things back where they're supposed to go? Um, you know, because it would be easier to find them if I didn't uh, just put them back wherever and just toss them into a big, big bag together. So yeah, it was it was rather fun sizing the needles and putting them back all the way into their little sleeves and their packages. So and it it I kinda laughed because I thought, well maybe I should relook at um Carrie Penny's system for her circulars and think about doing something like that, but I don't know. Haven't decided yet. And I think I have plenty of time to decide, you know. So those things are all put away where they need to go and packed back up. So, yeah, it's been, been, been a chore last night doing that. And it's, it's funny how you don't realize that you've done that kind of thing. And I've noticed I've done that before with um, hooks, too. Um, crochet hooks. The um, I've gotten better about that with the crochet hooks because I have one of those zippered pouches that holds different size needles. 
So I've gotten a lot better about keeping track of those kind of things. But, um, yeah, it's been interesting as I'm going through and finding things here and there and that kind of thing. And uh, got all my um, looms and knitting machines almost packed up. I've got to pack up another, the um, Hattie ones that I have. I have the Addy King and I have the Addy Small. And I haven't used them this year. And, uh, and I don't know why I didn't use them because I was thinking I would use them more. But I think a lot of that has to do with the changes with the prayer shawl ministry where I'm at. Um, since, we're, since I'm no longer one of the coordinators, they don't make an active attempt to find places to um, hand out hats and gloves, hats, scarves and gloves, those kind of things. Um, so, you know, they haven't really had a need when people were bringing them in. They were, you know, kind of, kind of telling them we don't really need these right now. This is what we need. Instead, they're focusing on Afghans and some different blankets for one group. I do find it rather interesting that they've, um, well, let me put it this way. We have always gathered a lot of baby sweaters, baby blankets, um, handed them out to the Pregnancy Resource Center to um, local hospitals, um, and as well as um, the infant development here in our area. Well... For some reason, these gals don't want to do that, so they want to get rid of all the baby blankets and the baby sweaters, those kind of things. And what I find interesting is we have always, in our um, annual knit and run, given all of those out with the exception of two sets, um, so that we have them available for anyone that needs them. With the exception of two sets, have given those out on the knit and run to our local children's hospital which um, does have a lot of babies that are born there um, they also have a lot of babies that are in NICU and um, PICU which is pediatric ICU pediatrics ICU takes care of infants that are 18 months or older um, other than that they go to a NICU situation which is neonatal um, and for some reason, they've decided they're not going to do that, I guess. I don't know. But it's in some ways, and I, and we have had quite a few of the people who have worked with us, um, who have knitted, crocheted items for us, whatnot, you know, always come and, and, and do those kind of things. Now they're kind of backing away, they're not coming in, they're not doing those things anymore, um, simply because those are things that they enjoy doing, like making hats and scarves. Um, I have a friend who is going to be 94 years old this year, and um, for her to make... <coughs> don't know what the cat's got into there. Um, for her to make... Um, like an afghan like this that kind of thing it gets really heavy on her heavy on her arms so she doesn't um, like to make the bigger ones and I don't blame her um, I can understand that that's hard as you get older that kind of things your strength goes away you know you're not interested in making big huge things so for her maybe can you know, making smaller things like smaller shawls, um, smaller little blankets, afghans, um, hats, scarves. Those were great items for someone of her age. And, you know, they're kind of backing away from those things. So that's kind of sad. Sad to see.
And, um, you know, I mean, I sat down with them before we left and they'd asked, how do you find people to do these things? We gave, you know, to give away these things. I'd given them a list of all our contacts and I told them, I said, yeah, but you have to understand, we also did a lot of what we call cold calls. We would go out. Um, if we'd heard of a new facility, either a nursing facility, um, a daycare for older adults, those kind of things, we would call them and talk with their director and see if they could use any items, if we could bring those down. And um, generally, most of them are thrilled to get them. Um, and it also um, means you have to also call different nursing homes, see if they're needing anything. Um, and they're just not doing that. They're just not interested in doing that. And that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but a lot of the ladies don't like those changes because they feel like they're, the things that they make aren't going out to the people that need them or want them. And I've tried to explain that to them. And, um, you know, they come across with this, oh, well, we'll just take the hats down to the cancer center. Well, you just can't do that at this cancer center because they don't accept them. Um, the cancer center, you specifically have to talk with the social worker because they have so many different groups that make things for them so that they, will, they won't take everything you bring. You know, you call them each month and say, I've got this many hats, can you use them? Um, because they're always useful in the chemo area. And um, generally they will tell you, we'll take 10 hats this month. We'll take eight hats. And that's based because what she's seeing you know, the, the need that they have and making sure that all the groups um, can provide items. And um, generally what she does is each day, you know, she walks through with a basket several times a day that has hats and scarves in it um, to hand out to the patients and or family members that are there in the waiting area. Um, as well as she can go back in the back where the patients actually are and hand those out. And um, that's always been good because when you go back into the area where the chemo is given, it is a much cooler area um, of the hospital, plus the chemo, when it's actually going into you, it um, chills you, gives you chills. Um, many times. So the hats, um, you know, are, are, are very welcome during that time. So, uh, yeah, but, and I've, I've tried to tell these ladies if they need help with doing those cold calls, let me know. Um, you know, I did it for several years. It's no big deal, but they're not interested and that's fine. Um, you know, let them do what they want to do. They'll figure it out as they go. But, uh, yeah, it's been rather interesting to see the changes and the folks that are unhappy with those changes, um, wanting to change things back. And I said, no, it's not going back. I'm not coming back. Um, there are a lot of reasons I'm not going back. So, uh, Although I am still part of the Pershaw ministry, still make things and bring things for them. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting how different people um, react to things that are going on and how they do things. So, um, yeah, it's just been interesting to see the difference in the way that things are being done. And the response that people have to those things, you know, you don't always expect that kind of thing to happen. But 
you know, it's life. What can you say? And, um, yeah, I've been having fun with that. But some of the ladies, we also meet for different things, you know, at not only at the senior center, but um, some different things that we do, like um, Christian Women's Organization, which has a nice luncheon every month. And um, that's always nice. Well, helps if you do it right, Jane. <sighs> Some days are better than others. I had a weird, weird thing happen this morning. Um, turn this off. Sorry folks. I don't always remember to turn my phone off. But um, I had something strange happen this morning. I normally on Thursday mornings um, I have to take trash out. But this this morning was a little different. They changed the day. And um, you have to have it out there by about 6 a.m. in the morning. So this morning I set the alarms, you know, to, to wake me up so I could get the trash out there. And um, set my coffee to start at 6 a.m. And So when I came back into the house, it'd be all ready and hot for me and that kind of thing. The alarm clock didn't go off. The coffee alarm to start the coffee didn't go off, didn't start. <laughs> and I'm like, am I in some kind of twilight zone today? What is going on here? And then I'm like, well, maybe the coffee maker is like, it's not Thursday, so we're not going to start. And um, I don't know what happened with my alarm clock. That kind of threw me because I... There are times that I forget to turn it off and it goes off on days I'd like to sleep in. <laughs> so, maybe I have to get a new one. I don't know. We shall see. Now, my husband had always used his cell phone um, setting that clock, you know, but. I don't normally set that because I don't think it's going to be loud enough to wake me up. I'll probably ignore it. I mean, I ignore a lot of sounds on the phone at night. Although I do have it on disturb for most of the night. But occasionally they do break through. You know, when the phone, um, you know, it's, I have an Apple, so of course an iPhone. So, of course, when they do their updates, sometimes it changes things. And that's a little frustrating when that does that. So, you have to go back in, check those settings, and see what they've changed. All that fun stuff. And um, I had spent Wednesday, speaking of changing things and everything all of a sudden I couldn't get my email and this is the email that it's that's Jane Wynn at um, Comcast.net I had gone in they'd sent us the email you know telling us we need to change our password well I thought I had changed my password uh, and of course Comcast is Xfinity now and it has one of the most convoluted systems. There isn't any way for me when I'm looking at my email to change that. Um, you have to log into it. I've logged into I had logged into it, and um, of course I don't log into it with the you know to pay the bill with that email. I use a different email. And um, 
then never could get to a place where I could change the email. Email, and I just got really frustrated. So I called them, and of course you're on online with them for about. Well, I was online with them for over 45 minutes. I don't know. I think it was probably closer to an hour, but I know 45 minutes at least to get that fixed and to get another issue fixed, which was um, I had someone that I don't normally call. I had called her to let her know that I was coming up to visit her in the hospital, and um, I was going to bring her a shake and an Arby's um, chicken slider because that's what she wanted. That's what she likes. And, um, but she never called me back and I thought, okay, that's a little odd. Normally, you know, I do know everyone says she'll call you back. So then when I got in there and was telling her, you know, I called you and uh, just wanted to make sure I brought the right thing. She said, oh yeah, this is fine. She goes, you called me? I said, yeah, and so she looked on her phone, she goes, well, no, I had someone, Thomas Wynn, call me, but I don't know a Thomas Wynn. So I was talking with them about that, why is it when I call, my phone rings in as Thomas Wynn and not Jane Wynn. Um, after he'd passed away, I'd gone in, changed everything over to my name, taken him off. Well, they never took him off. So, um, my phone supposedly is regi to, registered to Thomas Wynn and not Jane Wynn. So I was trying to get that corrected. When she told me, oh, well, we'll correct that with the email. And um, I don't think it's corrected, to be honest. I mean, it's com it's, it's Xfinity, Comcast, whatever you want to call them. They have a monopoly here. And like I said, they're... Their website is the most convoluted website I have ever seen. You can't change things. You can't change the emails. You can't you can't add an email. Um, it's it's rather annoying. So anyway, supposedly she did get that changed over, um, but added a new email for me which isn't what I wanted. So, I'm not too thrilled with them. You know, it's getting, it's getting to be rather annoying. And they are my internet provider um, because I needed a faster internet speed in order to upload videos to YouTube and um, and at the time when we had looked into it Verizon just wasn't fast enough they weren't given what we needed um, of course we were in the apartments then and the apartments it had to do with the way that the cable speeds came in and um, you know, that's what they were telling us. Um, but we would have to have someone come in and redo the cables because apparently the cables that were inside the walls of the apartment were older, breaking down, and we were only getting 18%, which is why we were having a lot of problems even viewing uh, TV because the signal kept getting lost, those kind of things. So we had, um, at that time, we had contacted the cable company and Verizon to come out and look. And Verizon, of course, you know, suggested we do this. We have to go into the walls and change this. And um, 
Thomas was pretty put out with Verizon because we just weren't getting the speed and he said if it's Wi-Fi we why is it dependent on the cable system and you know he finally said no looked into Xfinity Xfinity gave us the speed that we needed but of course you and even though it's Wi-Fi you needed um, a better cable system in order to view the TVs and um, when push, push came to shove we needed to get our landlord to approve for them to um, go into the house and pull the lines those kind of things and of course Xfinity doesn't do that you have to hire a different company to come out and do that it was going to run her ten thousand dollars to do that so she wasn't going to allow that and then at that point they were going to um, because in many of the other apartments they had already drilled holes into the wall from the outside to bring the cable in they were going to do that there and um, you know then they they determined they had to contact the owner of the building to get permission to do that she wasn't going to allow that because she was concerned about pests getting in now mind you, under all the doorways you already had chipmunk, chipmunks that were getting in under the doors as well as um, through the ceiling. So she wasn't going to allow that and for the longest time our Wi-Fi router um, went through an open window. So regardless whether it was winter or not um, we had it going through the outside upstairs window um, because she wouldn't allow that uh, to be changed so but over here you know things are fine that kind of deal um, thankfully but uh, You know, it's just it's just interesting the things you have to go through when you're talking with these stations, those, those station stations, with these cable companies and stuff, the things that they do. And I can understand, you know, you have to get permission from the owner, those kind of things. But I always thought it was rather ridiculous that our cable had to go through an open window and our Wi-Fi in order to get the speeds that we had you know needed those kind of things and um, so it was easier to put my cell phone on with the Xfinity but now it looks like they didn't do what I originally thought had been done and of course family friends They've all put into their phone that it's Jane Wynn. So when I call, it comes up that it's Jane Wynn that's calling. But anybody new, it shows that it's Thomas Wynn. So I don't know if they have fixed that or not. Um, I highly doubt it. Um, I had an issue when I was um, being billed for my cell phone through them to begin with. Um, and the issue was I had to change my credit card information because you know I'd had that scam um, someone had charged something through Catherine Plus or something um, so I had to change that all out and when I changed that out um, in the past I've always done it where I would pay the bill when I got the bill but um, they started a thing with their cell phones where you um, couldn't choose the date they chose the date which was not a date that was good for me so I had to go in and try to get them to change that date they didn't do it um, we went back and forth several weeks in a row hours at a time on the line with them you know on the phone 
to where they finally got it situated and changed, corrected around for a date that works for me. Um, and they, at that point, had told me, I had someone tell me I could change the date, you know, to a date that was more appropriate for me. Found out that that wasn't the case. Um, and I talked with probably a total of six different people, you know, who's agents who supposedly helped you corrected this did all this finally got one that actually knew what was going on and said no um, when you have cell phone service through them you don't get to choose the date it's the date that you sign up for it that's the end of the story and you don't get to pay your choice of paying whether you pay through your bank account or your um, debit or credit card um, once that's set, it's set in gold, and that's the end of the story. So yeah, it was a lot of back and forth, and this is what so-and-so told me, this is what this person told me on this date, because I'm one of those people, I take a notebook when I'm talking to people that have to do with those kind of things. I write down their name, the time we talked, the date we talked, and that comes from being a home health nurse because um, many times you had to have a telephone log so that they knew uh, you weren't just calling and talking to friends I guess I don't know what it was but you had to have a telephone log of who you had talked to throughout the day um, how long you were on with them, number all that fun stuff so I've always done that <laughs> So it was rather interesting. But supposedly they've got it all fixed. I guess we shall see why, right? I'm just hoping the next time I call someone they don't say, um, well, I didn't answer because it came up as Thomas Wynn and not Jane Wynn. Who knows? Doesn't, doesn't seem like things get... Uh, taking care of the way we think they should be, should, does it? But I guess that's just the way things are going to be nowadays, huh? All right, guys, I think I have chatted your ear off long enough for today. Um, but the chitter-chatter, nonsense, I will talk again with you soon. But remember, everybody, I hope that you have a great week. Be a little kinder to yourself, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.